welcome back you watching biosell let's talk about the real estate space particularly mumbai real estate uh, which has seen ups and downs uh, some experts believe that the market here is heating up all over again some experts believe that there is more to go however one thing's for certain the prices are still at very very high levels uh, that's obera realty the stocks up nearly 3% one of the better performers as far as the uh, the current market environment is concerned and even since listing the stocks done pretty well Vikas Obero is joining us right now, the CMD at uh, Obero Realty. Vikas, great having you with us. It's been a long time. I remember talk to, talking to you around the time of the IPO, and you were extremely cautious. Uh, that cautiousness still stands. I mean, you've been uh, uh, having a pulse on the market. Talk us about what's the company been doing, how's the market here in Mumbai right now, growth plans, and about the company per se. Morning, Ashutosh. Uh, many questions, actually. Uh, <laughs> Uh, see, the Mumbai market continues to be good and uh, we as per uh, our original plans continue to be cautious and uh, you know want to take uh, time. Uh, as far as buying land goes, we are obviously very cautious. We don't want to uh, put in monies that we've raised from the market in a heated environment and then you know bear the brunt. So uh, we continue to be cautious. Okay, then let's get down to uh, the basics here. Uh, talk about uh, the company per se. You've just signed uh, uh, an agreement with Samsung as a contractor of Worley project. Talk about the project that you're planning to bring in. What's the size? What's the scale? How much are you investing in this particular project? And secondly, some of your other luxury projects which you're currently undertaking, uh, what's the traction on those projects? Well, uh, this Worley project of ours is a mixed-use development. We have... Uh, a hotel component, we've got office, and we've got uh, branded residencies here. Each apartment would be about nine and a half, ten thousand square feet. This is a 371 meter tall building, uh, and uh, hence we've got uh, Samsung uh, CNT to come and build this. Uh, they are the experts. These are the same guys who build uh, the Burj Khalifa. They've also built. Uh, yeah, the Petrona Towers, so they actually hold a, a record of like, you know, doing the tallest building and most complicated structures. So, uh, the entire building is uh, programmed to be constructed in almost about 55 months, if I'm not mistaken, give or take uh, like two months here and there. And uh, it's over 3 million square feet of, uh, you know, uh, constructible area. Hmm. Right. You know, uh, let's talk about the realizations per se, uh, the project that you're currently talking about, some of your older projects. Uh, what's the kind of realization that you're witnessing on a sequential basis also between last quarter, the last couple of quarters and this one? Are you witnessing some signs of a slowdown as far as average realizations are concerned? You know, in fact, uh, see, there are two things in a slowdown that you're probably talking about. One should see either sales dropping or, uh, you know, one has to drop prices to attract uh, sales going forward. One thing for sure is that we are not able to increase price. You know, in a market probably a year earlier, if the volumes that I see today, which continue to be there, so this probably answers your earlier question that whether there are volumes or no. Yes, volumes continue to be there. There is uh, um, obviously pressure on the price, but this pressure is more to not increasing the price. But I don't see a depletion of price as such. And this probably may be true only or may be true to some areas and one could be ours where uh, maybe Goregaon has hit a tipping point. Uh, we have a shopping mall which is like, you know, doing very well. We have a five-star hotel here, we have offices here and uh, we have an international school. So this area per se has come in, come in to its own and uh, people are uh, you know, interested in moving here as well. So I don't see pressure I don't even see volume depleting but yeah as a company we are not increasing our price because the environment probably does not support so hmm. so uh, sticking on the, the issue of pricing particularly for the market of Mumbai uh, do you think that the pricing is now uh, coming near to the peak levels that we saw earlier uh, or do you think there is still some more headway as far as pricing I mean players like you you can still play with pricing well, you know, uh, the idea is not about increasing price. What one has to really look at is what velocity are you able to generate when you're increasing price. We as a company are very con conscious of the fact that 
we need to get volumes also into place it's not about maximizing the last buck on a apartment but also look at how many apartments you are able to sell at a particular price so the current scenario is such that one cannot increase prices i feel okay uh, you know staying with the macro theme here we recently have seen uh, the cci the competition commission of india becoming very very strict as far as real estate companies are concerned one of the large companies was actually fined a hefty sum for using its monopoly position among when dealing with buyers uh, is that a major concern right now i mean in the past we have seen instances of home buyers approaching uh, authorities saying that uh, the players tend to use their uh, monopolistic power in a in a in a, in a way uh, how concerned about, are you about these developments uh you know again here uh, bombay is governed by that uh, mofa uh, and uh, that act clearly takes care of the kind of document a developer can have with a flat buyer anything over and above that mofa does not permit has to be tested in law so really one can't uh, apply uh, the competition commission's uh, uh, you know order uh, unilaterally to across india and then Uh, make it applicable but you know our experts are reading that and we are also trying to see what uh, effect will it have and how going forward will one need to design a document and i for one you know like uh, have been uh, you know advocating for uh, uh, what you call uh, a regulator to come in play so we are more than happy if the regulator is in play and he decides the rules of the game instead of you know each party guessing what the rules of the game would be and then testing it in law you know okay let me just uh, digress a little bit from that let's talk about general environment right now you talked about pricing you talked about demand what's the impact of uh, uh, rising interest rates i mean uh, there are expectations that there could be more uh, rate hikes going forward are actual home buyers uh, deferring their uh, sale their purchases in anticipation of perhaps At, at some point of time maybe a year or year and a half later on interest rates may cool down are you witnessing that right now well you know firstly to answer your first question that interest rates aren't really going up any more i feel and i at least hope so having said that uh, again you know people in india by and large are conservative as far as borrowing goes uh, you know from my own record i see that uh, uh, you know most of our home buyers uh, put in their own money even if they take debt it's it's for a smaller component of the purchase price um and and this is uh, not a very long term debt people intend to pay this back in like 4 and 5 years and uh, here again you know the indian buyer uh treats buying a house almost like an investment he does not look at this as an expense so i don't really see that uh, uh you know home uh, loan rates going up will deter people and the other upside uh, which is different from the western world is that we hardly or we in fact have almost nil uh, foreclosure as far as home loans are concerned so which also is a, a very uh, big positive and there is a very little worry for banks to you know um, uh, react on anything like that okay uh, you know let's come back on the company per se cash reserves of 1560 crores i can't recall any other company in the market right now which has so much of cash and have managed to keep their books as clean as you have how do you plan to deploy so much of cash would it be to uh, uh, to take in properties which are let's say distressed assets would you be looking at augmenting your land bank perhaps looking at cities beyond mumbai let's say delhi ncr tier 2 tier 3 cities I'm just trying to get a sense how do you plan to deploy that this huge amount of cash that you have with you asha we are a real you know we are a bombay centric real estate company we want to continue to focus in bombay uh, this cash will obviously go in buying land uh, increasing our land bank uh, and we are looking at the right deals it's not that we want a distress deal we want a deal where our company can make reasonable margins uh, after investing um, you know we have a a set hurdle rate if uh, any investment passes through that we'll more more than happy we are more than happy to actually go about buying land so it's not that we are averse or we are like uh, you know afraid of taking any call on that account but some of your contemporaries vikas have actually kept a very unique model for instance godrej properties follows an asset light model they come into uh, agree agreements with parties with contractors for joint development of projects uh, is that something you might also look at 
You know, we are already doing a joint venture. In fact, this Worli project is a joint venture. We are more than happy doing joint ventures. As a company, we have cash. We want to deploy that cash. As a company, we've got a lot of energy as well. So we can do more projects. It does not really matter whether projects come out of, uh, uh, you know, uh, buying the project or it comes out as a joint venture. We are happy doing either or, and or rather. Okay. Uh, this was about residential. Uh, let's talk about the commercial real estate uh, because, you know, the pickup in commercial real estate has not been as fast as what we have witnessed in the residential side. Let's talk about that on-ground report of what's happening on the commercial space. You have a couple of properties here in Mumbai as well. Uh, rentals, uh, leases, how's that panning out? Well, you know, here again, I would say that a lot of developers who had initially planned for commercial buildings have scrapped the plans and now put that into residential. So this in turn will reduce the supply of commercial space available. And in turn, probably, uh, you know, whatever is left will obviously uh, see a higher demand. So I don't really see uh, commercial space also coming down in any uh, way. Any developer who has the bandwidth or the uh, you know cash in bank to build a project can uh, easily uh, expect uh, you know rentals to be stable. Vikas, great having you with us. Uh a pleasure, an absolute pleasure. That's Vikas Oberoi, the CMD at Oberoi Realty, talking about not only the company per se, but the entire Mumbai real estate market. And of course, uh, the company as well. One of the most uh, uh, efficient as far as the cash deployment is concerned. 15, 60 crores worth of cash on books and negligible debt is what they have right now. The stock's up nearly 3% at this point of time. Uh, we'll take a break right now. We'll come back and discuss more stocks with our experts.